Hello everyone. I'm back with another chapter of Geography, Class 7, NCRT. Chapter 4, Air. So as we all know that Earth is surrounded by a huge blanket of air called atmosphere and we all are dependent on it for our survival. It not only provides us the air we breathe, it also protects us from the harmful effects of the sun's rays. If there was no atmosphere, then two things would have happened. We would have been burned alive by the heat of the sun during day and at night we would get frozen. So it is the mass of air that has made the temperature on the Earth livable. Now let's read about the composition of the atmosphere. Well, if you see this pi diagram, you can see nitrogen takes it over by 78% and oxygen takes it over by 21%. These two are the major gases which make up the bulk of the atmosphere. Now what about the other gases? There has to be some other gases as well. So they are carbon dioxide, helium, ozone, argon and hydrogen but they are found in less quantities. Now we are going to read about how these gases came into existence. Let's talk about nitrogen. It comes directly from the air. The bacteria that live in the soil and roots of some plants take nitrogen from the air and change its form so that plants can use it. Talking about oxygen, it is the second most plentiful gas in the air. Humans and animals take oxygen from the air as they breathe. Now green plants produce oxygen during photosynthesis. In this way, oxygen content in the air remains constant. If we cut trees, then this balance gets disturbed. Coming to carbon dioxide. hmm. It is another important gas. Green plants use carbon dioxide to make their food and release oxygen. Humans or animals release carbon dioxide. The amount of carbon dioxide released by humans or animals is equal to the amount used by the plants which make a perfect balance. Now let's talk about the structure of the atmosphere. Our atmosphere is divided into five layers. I'm going to present a small picture that I've made it myself and easily remembering what are the five layers of atmosphere. So have a look at this. First level is the troposphere. Remember that as tropo, which is equal to tropical, and then it is associated with greenery. So you can only see greenery at the first level of the atmosphere. And then we have the stratosphere, strata. Just compare it with strategy. Always remember strategy is the second step. And then comes the mesosphere. The meaning of meso is middle, so midpoint. So five definition over here, the midpoint is mesosphere. And then comes the thermosphere, thermo, which is equal to heat, and it's very heat out there. So remember it by that. And the last one is exosphere, exo exit so the last one has to be exit that's the easy way of remembering it so let's quickly read about each of them troposphere the height of troposphere is 13 kilometer from the ground it is the layer where the oxygen exists and rainfall fog hailstorm occurs in this layer stratosphere the height of stratosphere is 50 kilometer from the ground in this layer aeroplanes fly and it also contains the layer of ozone gas we have just learned how it protects us from the harmful effect of the sun rays then comes the third layer which is the mesosphere the height of mesosphere is 80 kilometer from the ground meteorites burn up in this layer or entering from the space. And then comes the thermosphere. It is very hot in this layer. Temperature increases as the, incre as the height increases. An ionosphere exists in this layer. And the height of this layer is 80 to 400 kilometer from the ground. And this layer is also very helpful in radio transmission. In fact, radio waves transmitted from Earth are reflected back to the Earth by this layer. And last but not the least, exosphere, the uppermost layer of the atmosphere. This layer has very thin air, light gases like helium and hydrogen float into the space from here. Now let's read about weather and climate. So what is the definition of weather? Weather is the R2R, day-to-day -day condition of the atmosphere. Remember that. R2R and day-to-day -day condition of the atmosphere. It is more of a real-time information. And what do you mean by climate? The average weather condition of a place for a longer period of time represents the climate. So climate is more of a long-term point of view and weather is more of a day-to-day -day and real-time point of view. Now let's read about temperature. It's the hotness and coldness of the air around us is known as temperature. The temperature of the atmosphere changes not only between day and night, but also from season to season. Again, real time and long term point of view. Summers are hotter than winter. An important factor that influences the distribution of temperature is insulation. Insulation is the incoming solar energy intercepted by the earth. The amount of insulation decreases from equator towards the pole. Uh, this is quite evident if you see the sun rays directly falls on the equator. Therefore, the insulation level over there will be higher compared to the poles. Temperature in cities is much higher than that of village. The reasons are because in cities we have concrete and metal buildings as well as roads that gets heated up during the day and this heat is released during the night. Also the crowded high-rise buildings of the cities they trap the warm air and thus raise the temperature of the cities. Now let's move on to air pressure. Let's try to understand what is air pressure and how is it formed. 
So the pressure that is exerted by the air above us on any body like us or the entire earth itself is called air pressure. You will be surprised to know that the air presses us from all direction and our body exerts a counter pressure. So let's try to understand about air pressure. The air pressure is highest at sea level and decreases with height. What does it mean? Well, the air gets thinner the higher you go. When you are in the mountains, there is less air passing in and around. And when you are on a boat or on a sea level, the pressure is high because the waves of the sea carry tremendous amount of force of air with it. So the air creates huge pressure near the sea level and it gets thinner when you go up. So let's talk about winds. What are winds? Winds are nothing but the movement of air from high pressure area to low pressure area. Winds are broadly divided into three types. They are permanent winds, seasonal winds and local winds. Permanent winds are also called trade winds. They are the permanent winds. These blow constantly throughout the year in a particular direction. So if you look at this world map, you can see all these colorful arrows that indicates the trade winds. They constantly move in and around the borders of the continent. Seasonal winds. These winds change their direction in different seasons. For example, monsoons in India. We have learnt in 6th class that how the monsoon winds come from the southern part of the country through Kerala. So Kerala being the first state to witness monsoon in India, therefore you can pretty much see how these seasonal winds function. The last is the local wind. These blow only during a particular period of the day or year in a small area. For example, land and sea breeze. Coming to the next topic, moisture. What is moisture? Moisture is nothing but the amount of water vapor present in air. And the more moisture in the air, the more humidity it creates. When the air is full of water vapor, we call it a humid day. As the air gets warmer, its capacity to hold the water vapor increases. And so it becomes more and more humid. On a humid day, clothes take longer to dry. And sweat from our body does not evaporate easily, making us feel very uncomfortable. Now, when the water vapor rises, it starts cooling. The water vapor condenses causing formation of droplets of water. Clouds are just masses of such water droplets. When these droplets of water become too heavy to float in air, then they come down as precipitation. Now precipitation that comes down to the earth in liquid form is called rain. Most of the ground water comes from rain water. With this, we have come to an end of chapter 4. If you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And make sure you are subscribed, you'll get an alert when my next video comes or if you want me to make anything specific, do let me know.